Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Decoding I2C with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. In this presentation, we'll show how to use Rodian Schwartz MXO Series Oscilloscopes to decode I2C serial data. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with the operation of MXO Series Oscilloscopes, as well as a basic understanding of the I2C protocol. If you're unfamiliar with either of these topics, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation getting started with MXO series oscilloscopes and or the presentation understanding I2C before beginning this presentation. Rodian Schwartz MXO series oscilloscopes support a wide variety of serial decodes. I2C decodes require a software license K510, which enables decoding of the I2C serial data or SDA line. Decoding can be performed using standard analog channels or logic or digital channels. Note that digital channels require the MXO B1 option as well. In addition to decoding and displaying I2C serial data, the MXO also supports numerous other useful decoding functions, such as triggering on either analog or digital signals and exporting captured frames in a variety of formats. The first step in decoding I2C data with the MXO is to select a bus from the list of items in the bottom right corner of the screen. Then select I2C from the list of available protocol types. This will also create a small box labeled I2C in the signal bar near the bottom left corner of the screen. This box can be used as a shortcut for configuring I2C parameters. The next step is defining the connection to the two wires used in I2C, SDA or serial data, and SCL or serial clock. These connections can be made either using the analog channel inputs and standard passive probes, or by using the logic channel connectors attached to logic probes. In this presentation, we'll be using the analog channels, but the configure and analysis function more or less identically for both types of inputs. At this point, let's pause for a moment to talk about channel settings. Before starting serial decodes, it's always a good idea to first check that both SDA and SCL signals are on screen. In this example, the channels connected to serial data and serial clock have appropriate vertical and horizontal scaling. The most common issue seen in serial decoding is incorrect vertical and horizontal settings, such as the wrong time base or volts per division settings. So it's best to visually verify that these are set appropriately. Another potential issue is too small of a sample rate. At least 2.5 times the dot clock rate is the standard recommendation. Now that we've verified that our input channel levels and time base are configured properly, the next step is setting thresholds. These can be thought of as the voltage values that divide a logical zero from a logical one. Here, the thresholds for SDA and SCL are both set to 1.65 volts. If we enable show threshold lines, we can see that, for this example, these are appropriate thresholds, since the configured voltage values fall almost directly between the high and low states of our clock and data signals. The next step is configuring a trigger. Basic forms of triggering used to initiate data acquisition include an event on the serial bus, a voltage on an analog or digital channel, or an external trigger signal. A bus trigger, that is, triggering on an I2C frame or on its contents, is the most common form of trigger used when performing I2C decodes. And in most cases, the bus trigger either occurs either on the start or on the end of the frame. In this example, the MXO triggered when it detected the beginning of an I2C frame. In addition to basic frame triggering, the MXO also supports triggering on patterns within the SDA data, for example on an address and or a data pattern, or when a negative acknowledgement is received. These parameters are defined by clicking on Set Details. Here, we're configuring the MXO to trigger when it sees a frame containing hex 75 as its first data byte. In addition to single events, the MXO can also trigger on a sequence of events. Please see the user documentation for more details on how to configure a sequence-based trigger. After parameters have been configured and acquisition started, decoded SDA data is shown on the screen, along with the analog or digital waveforms. The decoded data can also be displayed in the decode table at the bottom of the screen. 
The decode table includes information such as the frame state, start times, address type and value, read write bit, etc. All of this information is updated in real time. Data in the MXO's decode table can be displayed in a variety of formats. These include hexadecimal, octal, binary, ASCII, etc. The format can be changed both during and after decoding. Decoded results can be exported by choosing Export Results from the Shortcuts menu. The supported export formats include HTML, CSV, XML, and Python. The CSV example here shows the type of data included in the export, timing information, as well as the decoded values for each individual frame. Let's end with a brief summary. The K510 serial decode option enables I2C decodes on MXO series oscilloscopes. Connections to the dot can be made using either the scope's analog channels or using logic channels. All I2C protocol parameters are user configurable, and these of course should match the dot parameters. Decoded serial data can be displayed in a variety of formats, such as hex, binary, ASCII, etc., and this data is displayed both with the waveforms and in a separate decode table. The MXO also supports a wide variety of trigger types for serial data. Decoded serial data can be exported as CSV, HTML, and other formats. And finally, remember that it's usually a good idea to check basic oscilloscope settings, such as levels, thresholds, time base, etc., before starting decodes. This concludes our presentation, Decoding I2C with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. If you'd like to learn more about serial protocols, decoding serial signals, or Rodian Schwartz oscilloscopes, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.